Right now, President Obama lays out his plans to make college more affordable. The question is, will it work? And next, the Democratic mayoral candidates facing off in a heated debate last night with most of the shots fired at Bill de Blasio, but will the new front runner be able to maintain his lead? And later, the New York City Council today voting to override Mayor Michael Bloomberg. They have decided to pass bills that will police the police. Was that the right call? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in again tonight for Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us on this Thursday evening, August the 22nd. We begin with the three words that kids hate to hear, back to school, but more and more it's parents who cringe when considering the rising costs of education. And today, President Obama was in upstate New York on campus talking about ways to make college more, to, more affordable. And to do it, he wants to grade colleges and then use federal dollars as a reward. College students are starting to head back to campus and millions are worried about the high costs of earning that diploma. We've got a crisis in terms of college affordability and student debt. President Obama kicked off the new school year with a two-day, two-state bus tour. Bottom line is higher education cannot be a luxury. It's an economic imperative. Every American family should be able to afford to get it. At the University of Buffalo, the president laid out a plan for a new rating system that would tie taxpayer funds to college performance and value. Starting in 2015, schools will be evaluated by several criteria, including average tuition, scholarships and loan debts, graduation rates, and earnings of graduates. President Obama said that colleges that keep their tuitions down while providing top-notch education will see their federal funding go up. It is time to stop subsidizing schools that are not producing good results and reward schools that deliver for American students in our future. Last month, Congress reached an agreement to set federal student loan rates at 3.86 percent for this upcoming year. But going forward, they'll be tied to financial markets, which means they could go up as the economy improves. But students like Devonte McCoy are really worried about graduating with massive amounts of debt. McCoy wants to be a filmmaker, but he's already thinking about his financial future. It might put my dream back a little bit, and I don't want that to happen. Now, the White House saying it does not need congressional approval for today's proposal, but not everyone seems to agree, and that could be a bit of a problem. Senator Marco Rubio and other Republicans have already come out against the president's plan, saying new federal standards will inevitably lead to the private sector giving up more freedom, in Rubio's words, to innovate and take risks. I want to bring in tonight's panel to talk about this. Assemblyman Kieran Lawler, or Lawler, excuse me, is back with us. Uh, Republican of Fishkill in Westchester County. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Margaret McGrail joins us tonight. She is the Vice President of Student Services at Mercy College. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And Richard St. Paul is here, Republican strategist and a former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association. Uh, thank you all for being here. Margaret, I want to start with you. Mercy College is known for its affordability and for keeping its tuition rates low. How are you able to do that in a way that other schools don't seem to be able to or don't seem to want to? Okay. Um, obviously, I can't speak for what other schools are able to or not able to do, but I can tell you the mission of Mercy College is to serve the underserved student, the motivated student. So the administration and the board really do work very hard and very diligently to make sure that we are in a price point that can serve the students that we are there to serve. We serve predominantly um, the Pell recipient student, the high need student. We're also a Hispanic serving institution, a designated Hispanic serving institution. So the majority of our students are high need students, they're immigrant students, they're children of immigrants, they're first generation themselves. So we're very focused on making sure that we're meeting our mission and serving the students and providing them with a quality education. And having outlets like Mercy that make college education accessible to students who otherwise might not have that opportunity. What's the significance for the students? What does it mean for them both in the short term during, during their college experience but also beyond when they right. graduate? In addition to helping and serving the student in terms of their personal improvement over their lifetime in terms of their earnings, it also has a societal benefit. Um, there are studies that show that the student that has that bachelor's degree, while they personally are improving their lifetime earnings, there's also less drain on societal resources. They're less likely to be um, draining the welfare system, the Medicare system, and so on. So while we're also personally helping the student, it's also a societal benefit as well. I want to bring in the rest of the panel. Is this something that government should be focused on, trying to bring down the cost of school, or is this something that schools should be able to do on their own? Well, 
Well, you know, as far as the rating system, it reminds me of President Reagan's warning, the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> Do you remember the last federal coding rating system? It was the Homeland Security, red, orange. It was kind of a laughing stock. It didn't work. It was scrapped. I don't think it's the role for the federal government to do that. Um, I don't, I'm not optimistic about it. I think it's going to be, uh, it's coming over budget like most things in the federal government do, and I don't think it's going to have a big impact, you know, at the classroom level. Well, we just got the proposal today, so we don't have a price tag yet. Okay, um, we may not agree on this type of system. Granted, we may agree to disagree, but the federal government has to do something. I mean, Again, first generation on myself to go to college, so I was able to pay for my daughter to go to Syracuse University. But how many parents can foot $50,000 a year? $50,000 a year. And these schools don't play, Andrew. When it comes registration time, you better have the cash or you better have the grant or your child is not registering. Parents need to understand, it's not like high school where you go ahead to school, no money, no education. But I almost fell off my chair, frankly, when I found out, and I, I want you to repeat the numbers because that's the bottom line for our viewers. At Mercy, how much is it for, for undergraduate tuition? The undergraduate tuition for a year, so both fall and spring semester for this current year coming up is $16,996. And what I'd like to point out, we had a zero percent increase so that was also the same price that we charge for the 2012-13 year so when I say that the board and the administration is truly committed at maintaining our price point when possible we are absolutely committed to that so 16,000 and then how much for the dorms if, if it, your child lives in a dorm well the residence life fees vary slightly depending on whether you're in a single room obviously or you're in a quad so the range would be anywhere from an additional 8,000 to 10 depending <laughs> on the room that you want Andrew, it, it, this is remarkable when, when you look at the numbers because, okay, my wife works at Manhattan College. Manhattan is about 45,000 with the dorms, about 45,000 a year. Don't so get you, your wife in trouble. So, no, I'm not going to get in trouble. <laughs> but, but you take Manhattan College and then let's go Ivy League. Oh, let's sure. not even begin to discuss Yale and Dartmouth and all of those schools. It's remarkable that in our backyard, I didn't know the story of Mercy College. Mm -hmm. That I mean, because the bottom line is without any education, there's no tomorrow. And kids, first generational, like myself, right. can afford to go to school at Mercy. And in, oh, sorry. Sorry. in addition to the price point that we are committed to, to serve our students, our students come out with a borrowing rate much below the national trend, and our students are actually borrowing below the state trends. Our data shows that the national borrowing and the state level borrowing, Mercy College students come out below. Wow. Because your tuition is so much lower than... Mm -hmm. Look, there's no doubt that something has to be done. Uh, and to Margaret's point, this the education affects the societal ills of this country. Certainly, uh, to, to the point you made, a very good point that you made, which is a very Republican point also. I uh, like to, I mean, it's not, Martin, well, we get it's not just Republican, but it's certainly something that we preach, especially, <laughs> especially when we talk about school choice. But, but the point is that Republicans are, are, are very much into focusing on providing education to students, whether they're in high school or college, and that helps uh, the effect that it has on our, on our draining system and our economy. So yes, the federal government has to step, step in, and perhaps, yes, the rating system, I agree, is not, not the best, but perhaps something like the race to the top funds that we saw uh, that was administered if for, to schools for merit-based uh, education, I'm, I'm sorry, merit-based um, evaluations for teachers, perhaps the same thing can be done for colleges. We have to incentivize these colleges to keep costs low and provide a good education. I mean, when you have increase in public education of 27 percent, uh, and then inflation is only 2 percent, and then private uh, ed education at 14 percent, these increases are incredible, and they cannot sustain themselves. What's the Republican alternative proposal to bring down the price of college education? That's states. Let the, let it, the race to the top for colleges and let the states come up with a plan to deal with how to keep costs low. Not, not, not legislating from the federal government, but let the states, give the states an incentive to deal with the schools uh, and their, their state and incentivize them to keep costs low. Assemblyman, you work in, you're, you're in a, a state lawmaker. What's, sure. the, what's the Republican plan yeah. for? You know, uh, Florida and Texas are, are working on a bachelor's degree that you could get for $10,000. It's a combination of online and in classroom. Uh, they're pioneering it. They're asking for bids. So that is something that's being worked on. But one trend that I see is there's a lot of bureaucracy. We just saw last week or two weeks ago, uh, Senator Joe Bruno's daughter had a no-show job in the SUNY system. I'd like to take a hard look at the bureaucracies, especially 
state schools and say, is this person's salary making anybody smarter, preparing anybody for the workforce, and really take a hard look at those things. And so if Senator the answer is no. Uh, former Senator Bruno, isn't he a uh, Republican? Yeah, but I'm an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new guy. But, but, but Andrew, it's just remarkable to me. How can you have an education at Mercy for 25000 and at a Manhattan or Syracuse or any other school topping 50000 And reading between the lines of what she said, not only is the, the tuition low, they're keeping the student debt low, which means that they're giving out a large amount of financial aid. So if it can be done at Mercy, why can't it be done throughout the country? But it's We're not, being hijacked. But it's not being done. And, and if it's but, one of these areas right. where if, if private industry isn't going to take care of it or, or you know, the, the educational industry isn't going to take care of it themselves, isn't that where we need the federal government to step in? Because nobody argues that we, students don't need bachelor's degrees, students don't need college educations. Just about everybody does unless you're going into a trade, right? No, absolutely. Right. That, it's, it's a proven fact that the more education you have, the better off you are in terms of your salary. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but yes, the federal government should step in, but it's how the federal government step in, steps in. And it's not through a rating system, as I said before, it is through giving the states, uh, incentivizing the states with dollars to, to deal with costs in their but cost of let, education. But let's, say, let's say then you get, and this is the same argument that we've had over healthcare, you get a state like New York or New Jersey that seems very focused on educating its students, and then you get a state like, I'm pulling one at random here, Alabama or Oklahoma, where perhaps they're not as willing to spend the dollars on that educational infrastructure. Isn't that putting students in those states at a disadvantage compared to students in other places where the states are being more proactive? But Andrew, the whole argument, if you, I don't know, I'm sure Alabama would say they're very interested in educating Everybody's their children. Everybody's gonna say they are. But uh, look at it this way. You're gonna pay one way or the other, the taxpayer. So would you rather have a lifetime of someone receiving social services and being a drain on the taxpayer or would you rather have giving someone an education and then that person paying taxes for the rest of their natural life? And Which one do you think is better for the taxpayer? And, and I, I think it's the, the student who gets the education. It's a little bit like the arguments on health care, where otherwise if you don't have health insurance, you're going to the emergency room. Rich, we'll give you the last word. At, at the end of the day, we should all be interested in, in, in education at a cost. It's a, it's a, education is, an, is a business now. And it's just like any other competitor. I'm going to go where I can get the best bang for my dollar. So there is an incentive to keep costs low and provide a good education. All right. Margaret McGrail, Vice President of Student Services at Mercy College, thank you so much for joining us tonight. So thank you for your efforts at Mercy as well. Leading the way. Leading the way. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Leading, leading thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a break on RFL. Before we do, want to let you know we want to keep this conversation going online. Head over to Facebook or Twitter and sound off. Obama proposes college rating system to increase college affordability. Is it a good idea? Up next, we turn to the New York City mayoral contest. The debate heated up last night with most of the jabs. Get into the tall guy there. That's Bill de Blasio. We're going to have the highlights after the break. Stay with us.